first I would like to thank you, James Odell, uh, NBRMI, to invite me to speak here at the um, second conference. This is a two-part lecture um, to stay with the theme, understanding and optimizing the terrain. I thought that the best way is to um, share with you the practice and the knowledge that I have in the last 27 years, how I understand the biological matrix, how I uh, decode it, and how I optimize it. I like to begin the lecture often with this um, slide, one of my favorite slides. Uh, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all, all the previous centuries of its existence. I began my bioregulatory medicine journey in 1991 when I met my husband at the time, Scott Moyer. He introduced me to German functional medicine and German biological medicine. Also, he is known as the Vega Test um, instructor for, the, for North America, and he was then mentor uh, and um, study under Dr. Helmut Schimmel, who, is the origin, who was the originator of the Vega test method. So during the time that we were together, I've learned a lot from him. And in 2017, after 26 years of practicing this method, the um, Northern Wildfire in a uh, California came through my town and burned everything, including my house and everything that I have ever owned. So I decided to launch the, what my practice and everything that I have known under resopathy and, um, and begin to, uh, and decide to get out and um, share the knowledge under resopathy Institute. German functional medicine originated and developed by Dr. Helmut Schimmel of Germany. Um, that's where functional medicine began. Uh, in German functional medicine, diet, nutrition, and envi environmental toxins play an important role. Uh, German functional medicine analyzes how human biological system interacts functionally with the environment over time. So it tracks the body over time. A few years later, I was introduced to the term German biological medicine. This is about around 1995. German biological medicine is a bioenergetic practice that integrates Western basic science along with European homeopathy, European isopathy, European herbal medicine, traditional Chinese medicine principles, biophysical information therapy, and terrain milieu-based medicine. So Dr. James O'Dell talked a lot about terrain, the biological matrix, the milieu uh, yesterday. And that's what we're gonna focus on uh, today in the next two lectures. Here's a picture of Dr. Helmut Schimmel. I had the privilege to study uh, under him for a short time that I get to know him. He's considered the father of the Vega test method. He's also the author of the book, Functional Medicine, The Origin and Treatment of Chronic Diseases. The Vega test method was developed and created by Dr. Schimmel. It was based on the work of Dr. Reinhard Fohl. And Reinhard Fohl um, was an MD who studied the acupuncture meridian system and began to measure many points on the body. What, uh, it, what the, the method does, the Vega test method measures change in the electrical system the electrical resistance of a point, an acupuncture point, 
on the body to determine whether a substance is beneficial or detrimental to the body. In other words, does the body see it, it's benefiting the body, benefiting the body or not? Does the body resonate with it or not? And here's a device uh, that uh, came out in 1997. When it first came out, the device, we only had the meter and the honeycomb where you put uh, substances in to measure. And that was back in 1979. And in 1997, they updated the, uh, the device and include um, and put many information in here so that we can navigate a little quicker. This is the um, Vega firm. The reason that we got the name Vega test method, here you can see the name Vega here. So this is the second largest uh, company in Europe that make device to sense things. So they re develop sensors to measure all kinds of uh, levels, to measure grains in the silo, to measure little particle in the lab. And without some of these instruments, the airplane would not be able to take off. So they are known uh, as a firm that produce very precise um, uh, equipment with precision. So Vega develops and manufactures sensors for all kind of measurement, level, point level, and pressure, uh, as well as equipment for integration into process control systems. It is known as a company that produces measurement technology with highest reliability in every application. And the reason I'm explaining all of this is to show you a little bit of history, how I get here, how I'm doing what I'm doing today. Let's talk about the concept of media terrain. Dr. James O'Dell spoke quite a bit about the terrain, the biological matrix. We probably, uh, many of you probably have heard of this very known sentence, le microbe n'est rien, le terrain est tout. Um, the microbe is nothing, the terrain is everything, and that is a famous sentence from Claude Bernard. And Louis Pasteur on his deathbed also um, recognized this and said the same thing. Again, um, I will go a little bit deeper into this to show that the terrain is everything. So the word internal milieu has many, we have many terms to describe it. Sometimes it's referred as a biological terrain, sometimes we talk it as a biological matrix, the mesenchyme, the connective tissue, or the intertissue tissue. The mesenchyme houses the lymphatic system, just like how Dr., um, uh, how, what James mentioned yesterday, so I'm just um, uh, going through this very quickly. So it has the lymphatic system, the blood vessels, the nerve endings, and more. It, it mediates everything in between the cells. So if its cells are here, the connective tissue it mediates everything in, in, in between. And it is a gatekeeper of nutrients and waste exchange for cells. In the mesenchyme, so when toxins start to build up in our biological terrain, in our matrix, problems will occur. Many health problems will happen. The severity of the disease is based on how high is our toxic load. And our cell will not be able to absorb the nutrients and they cannot discharge the waste. Vital nutrients such as oxygen, vitamins, minerals, etc., will reach the cell by passing through the matrix. So therefore, cellular detoxification, communication, and regeneration is dependent upon the health and the integrity of the matrix, the bioregulatory matrix. So how do we measure this? Can, is there a way to measure this? And yes, if we could measure this through the biological index developed by Dr. Helmut Schimmel. So the biological index measures the state of the connective tissue to determine the degree of toxicity of the matrix. So as toxicity builds up, the mesenchyme becomes blocked and unable to transfer vital nutrients to the cells. The method was developed, like I mentioned, by Dr. Helmut Schimmel. The scale is from 1 to 21. So um, we use mesenchyme ampules, which is the matrix, 
right, in specific potency uh, to evaluate the condition of the connective tissue. In German biological medicine, um, it is a non-suppressive um, um, therapy. So when it's not suppressive, it means you're going to have reaction. And the reaction depends on how strong the reaction or how weak the reaction is, depends on the stage of illness. So the stage of illness can be determined by the biological index or the degree of intoxication or the Hans Reykjavik sick phases that James mentioned yesterday, and now it's called the uh, disease evolution table. Or the milieu terrain assessment. Uh, in the past, we have this uh, device called biological terrain assessment, where you measure the blood, you take out the blood, the saliva and the urine, and you measure the pH, the oxidation rate, and resistivity, and that's how you determine the condition of the terrain. You can also use dark field microscopy to see how organism uh, morph. Um, and I have developed from Hans Reykjavik sick phase into the eight phases of health because as I begin to test people, I also see that there are people in ideal phase where they can do just do anything. And you know, when you when, remember those times when we were in our twenties, we um, can drink coffee, and eat burgers, and party all night. We still have energy the next day. And then the, I also found that people in late stage four cancer, they are, some of them still can recover. So I expanded into the A phase of health. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Professor Dr. Gunther Enderlein so that you can understand a little bit more about the, the terrain and then we can go into the case study. So may I ask how many of you here work with the Sanum therapy or have heard of Sanum therapy? Wonderful. How many of you would not raise a hand no matter what I ask? So Dr. Gunther Enderlein uh, made two important contributions. The first contribution from him was, he said that the cell is not the smallest living unit. The protein is. The protein was based on the term the proton, as he knew it at the time as the smallest subatomic particle. So he called it the protein. So if you look in the dark field microscopy, you would see the cells about this big, and you see little dots just moving around. At the time, not knowing what those are, we um, uh, conventional medicine think it's just um, artifacts. But according to Anderlein, those, uh, the, those are living protein, and they are the uh, smallest unit living, uh, a living unit. And the second um, observation that he made is that the blood is not sterile, but rather contains microorganisms that are capable of morphing upward, causing illness given the proper milieu, the proper matrix, the proper terrain. So micromorph. The non-pathogenic protein is capable of morphing upward and becomes parasitic to the body. So in other words, they could be um, our friends at certain phase, and at certain phase depends on our pH, they would then morph upwards and become enemy to us. So the pathogenic form can also morph downward and become less pathogenic through a copulation process with a lower form. In other words, as organisms move upward, depends on the terrain, if we shift the pH, these can also then morph down by um, having a copulation process with the lower form that are non-pathogenic to the body. So both, both upward and downward morphing process are dependent on the body milieu. The, uh, it depends on the matrix or the pH. According to Anderlein, all chronic disease are based on the upward development of the endobionts. And then endobion means, endo means within, inside, bion is life. So um, that's life within. So according to Anderlein, there's only one disease, the endobiosis, only one disease. 
So the higher valence, the pathogenic form of the endobion disturb the regulatory ability of the body. The endobiosis is viewed as a permanent hyperacidity or a re reduction of alkalinity, which disrupt the biological regulation of our human organism. In the concept of the milieu, the terrain, hyperacidification is the greatest single cause of most disease processes. If the acid is not excreted out by the body, the excess acid will be stored in the connective tissue. This daily process is not the cause, it is a chronic of degenerative disease. So regulation, so what is regulation? Regulation is a reaction, regulation is adaptation. At any moment in our time, we always, the body's always regulate. If there's, a, if there's a stimulus throwing at you, you have to do something, and this is what we do all the time. So, for example, if I'm going to throw a ball at you, you need to do something. You need to avoid it. You need to move around. You cannot just stand there. But if I throw a ball at you, you're able to catch it. Let's show you have a good regulation. If I throw a ball at you, somehow you fall down. That's not good. Or if I throw a ball at you, it gets you to really uh, react hyperly. That's not balanced either. Or if I throw a ball at you, you just stay very rigid. You cannot do anything. That's not good, and that's the worst case, and that's called rigid regulation. So we are only as healthy as our ability to regulate. The ability to regulate is influenced by the milieu, the biological matrix. So, and all the remedies will work better in the correct milieu or the correct biological matrix. So besides other factors such as the psyche, the emotion, restoring the normal rhythm of the body, the circadian rhythm, etc., the true correction of all chronic disease involves restoring the regulation of cell metabolism and restoring the integrity of the mesenchyme, of the biological matrix, by re-establishing the normal acid alkali levels. This is a chart from uh, um, the work of Professor Louis Vincent, a French hydrologist. How many of you have you seen this chart? Okay. So we can um, see here. So Professor Louis Vincent was commissioned by the uh, French government to study water. And as he started to go and study water, he started to realize that some um, village in France, people live longer than others. So he sought the reason that if there is such a thing um, uh, as living longer, that must be uh, had to do with the quality of water and knowing that human beings, we are made of 70% to 80% of water, depends on where we measure. So he sought to make a chart and begin to, um, and, and tell himself that what if I go out and measure what is health? So what is longevity, what is health? So he then went to, study and measure high school students in a sport college in the mountain of France. Ideal condition to measure what is health. And he made this chart here. So here you have the um, ac uh, axis, you have two axes here. Here's a pH from acid to alkali uh, to 14, zero to 14, seven being the middle. Here you have the um, oxidation chart from zero to 44. And so he found that health happens within this little green triangle right here. So the red here is the blood, and the blue square is saliva, and here the yellow is urine. He found that ideal health happened with this little triangle right here, where blood is measured at about 7.35 pH, at about 22 oxidation rate where saliva is about 6.8 pH, about 22 oxidation rate. And urine here is about five, um, this is 6.5, yeah, 6.5, and then about 24, 24 oxidation rate. This is where health happens. So he also that to start to measure that in this, when we start to move away from this, 
For example, when we, we become more alkaline and reduced, this is where brown algae grow. And in this terrain, when we become acid and reduced, green algae grow. And in this terrain, when we are acid and, re, uh, and oxidized, fungus grow. And in this terrain, when we are more alkaline and uh, oxidized, uh, this is where cancer happen. So here we have delirium, here beginning of um, uh, precancerous, here we still have reversible cancer, and here is irrevers irreversible cancer. And as you look into measuring pH, it's all about electrons and protons. And in this terrain, we have less electrons and less protons, less life. So I'm going to share with you a lot of data. It's going to be a little bit boring uh, for you in the next little bit because I don't have a lot of graphs to share except a lot of data. And I have a very good excuse. I was born on September 3rd. They said I'm a Virgo. And so as a Virgo, they say I'm very meticulous. I love the details. And, I'm, and one of the qualities I'm really, I like to nitpick. So I thought, well, instead of nitpick, spending the time to nitpick my husband or my daughter, I decided to nitpick the medical data. <laughs> and that was satisfy my detective mind. So I spent many years just sit and work on a case eight hours a day on one person simply because I really want to know does it really work. And it has to prove to me because um, that it has to make sense, it has to uh, I have to be able to solve the case in practice. Uh, I like theories, but theory can only last so long with me, and I really want to know, does it really work? And being a pioneer in this field, sitting there and making all these measurements, there's no one checking me, so I have to check myself. And the way to check myself is to go to comb through all the details to prove it to me, that it works. So I'm going to share with you how to measure the matrix, and this, this could be measured. Uh, the measurement is done through biological index. Like I mentioned, it go from the scale from 1 to 21. The method was developed by Dr. Shimo. Mesenchyme ampules are used in different potency to determine um, the, the degree of toxicity of the matrix so that we can evaluate the connect, uh, connective tissue. Here you see here from 1 to 21. Um, one is found in fetus, baby, uh, and then a little uh, babies in, uh, uh, toddlers in here. And then here we see children often found in around here. And young, healthy adults starting in our 20, this is where we measure, 7, 9. From 10 to 15, it's considered functional health issue. This is where you feel something is not right, you don't feel as good, your energy is down, but the doctor still cannot find anything. So it's in a functional um, health issue. Here is in the more serious, this is the beginning of something clinical. As it moves a number, every time it moves one number, it means a lot. 21 is maximum. It's very rare that I see, I see 21. And I can give you one case of 21, very rare, but one, uh, when I was then working still with my, um, ex my husband at the time, uh, Scott Moyer, we have one person came here and he's, he looks really good. He's, um, he owned uh, the Gold Gym. He started out that movement of the Gold Gym. He looks really buff, very strong, very muscular. You look at him, you think he's very good, very healthy. He came in and uh, at the time when we measured him, we saw 21 came up and 21 equal heart. So he said that he's going to go to a um, rowing um, race. And he said that I'm going to go for a race and, and I want you to check me a little bit. I want to be in the uh, best shape possible and I think I'm just having a cold. But um, at the time we found 21 equals a heart and my husband had, um, then, Scott was saying, um, don't go. I would say cancel the race, don't go, and he said, no, no, I really want to do this, and this it means a lot for me. So he decided to do it anyway. 
And, um, and we got a call a few weeks later from a friend and saying that um, uh, they read in the newspaper, he, um, he, he passed away, he decided to go on the race. He won the race and he got out and he shook the hand, received a trophy and then he collapsed. So that was the only time that I saw 21 happen. The most I've seen so far is up to 20. So I'm going to um, lead you through how to read the biological index. I use a device, like you all know, I use a Vega device to, um, to, to read the body and develop a protocol so that I can solve the case. And you don't need to have a device. You just continue to do what you need to do, but the knowledge I'm going to share with you so you can begin to think that you can also find a way to measure the matrix or even think about that so you can apply the concept so that you can understand the matrix, if there's many ways to affect the matrix. So 7-9 is found in young, healthy adult. So when you don't have any issue, you talk to a lot of your 20s, they're still out there having a good time partying, they're often measuring 7-9. Uh, the, uh, the good example that I often use is like the traffic. The matrix is like the traffic. The cells are like the houses. So if the traffic is good, you me you're flying at 70 miles an hour, you're very efficient in getting to your house and getting in and out of the house. A10 is when a little bit more, it's always two numbers. Yeah, so the foundation number is always with two numbers. So A10 is when you become a little bit more congested, but it's still going. So lighter traffic, you have a little bit more traffic on the road, but it's, it's still moving. 911. 911 show that now you become more congested. The matrix is like the rush hour traffic. You're getting out, you're hitting the rush hour traffic. You're not getting there uh, efficiently to go get food and be able to return home. 1012, 1012 is, is not good. Now, um, extremely toxic load in the body. So think of it this way. You are now getting out and there's an accident on the road. You cannot really move, the traffic is stalling you're crawling. So the higher the biological indices, the more serious the disturbances of the matrix. So I'm going to give you a few examples. For example, someone could be 7, 9, and 15. So what does that mean? So 7, 9, the person is young, still healthy at the, uh, at the foundation, but he has something here. It could be that he has a serious cold at the time, but overall he's still good and healthy. Another good, good example would be, you could be, your foundation would be A10, and then you have something at 14. So a different way to assess the biological matrix. And then I will go into the case study to show you how uh, we can improve the body through the biological matrix. Another example here is the foundation is 911, so this is not good, and something is also at 15. So the person, knowing that they manage themselves to be, you know, that, so that they don't have to go see their doctor, but they're not able to resolve it here at the end. And I've seen that in a lot of um, um, health practitioners. People that know enough that they know what to do so that they don't end up seeing the doctor but not able to resolve it at the end. And this one is not uh, good. We have 10, 12 as a foundation and something at 17. This person definitely will not feel good. So at this point, it doesn't matter what therapy you're doing, it's not solving it. You, um, so you have to look to see what can we do to really move the index down. What can you do to open up the matrix? It's very important, it's not more it's not loading more remedies, but it's rather even sometimes just going off the remedies get help the body resolve uh, that because the body is unable to absorb and unable to detox. This, uh, this is another situation. You can see there's many numbers here. The person can have a foundation of 911 and then on top of it 13, 15, 17. This person definitely does not feel good. 
He already is seeking out doctors, been working with it, and you've seen this in uh, a lot of pre-malignant cases as well in a lot of autoimmune. And look at this. This is the um, really not good. You can see the foundation is 10, 12, and this person definitely is not good. I've seen this in a lot of late stage four cancer. Rarely that I see someone at 11, 13. I think I only saw one or two cases at 11, 13 as foundation uh, numbers, and those are people already on chemos. So you can filter the biological index um, through location. You can ask where 17 is at. What organ? Is it 17 is in the thyroid, the liver? Where's 15? 15 is in the heart, the thymus. Where is 13? So you can begin to filter through organ, and right away you know that the worst problem is in the thyroid and the liver, and then the next worst. So that, this helps you to prioritize. You can also filter the biological index through remedies to see what remedy would bring down the biological index. For example, in this case, the person has the index of the liver in 17. When you put in the remedy to detox the liver right here, it brings it down to 15, so it moves to point. And you put in DMSA, for example, to help chelate the heavy metal, it brings it down to 14, so you know right away there's an issue with heavy metal here. But when you put in the thyroid, here is a nature thyroid, two grains. It takes two grains to bring it down to seven ideal. You know the problem underneath is the person thyroid is not working and causing, and ha there's a presence of heavy metal and you need to detox the liver, but you can see at the foundation here, this is what's going on, is the thyroid is not working. So what if we have a way to converse with the intelligence of the organism? What if we have a way to collaborate with the body and let it tell us what it wants and what it needs and how to best repair itself? I use, um, I define uh, resopathy as a health modality that using both resonance and advanced feedback technology to gather biological data to measure the body natural electrical field. So um, I, um, I decide to, um, um, to um, bring this method out uh, to, the, to the world with the protocol that I use to help share the knowledge um, after after what happened to me in October. So resopathy used point conductivity measurement and it's looking for a yes and no. Yes and no system using both resonance and uh, galvanic skin, uh, skin response as a feedback mechanism to uh, ask the body for a living organism. So this is what I use, but you can use your own method whether you use uh, kinesiology. I know Dr. Stride yesterday uh, was excellent with what you come up with, with your own method. And there's just many ways to assess the body. I go with, um, with this method only because I was training it. I was, uh, that was part of my past. So, uh, and I like technology because I love gadgets and also I like to check myself because there are times I would be tired and there are times my ego would get involved and I would think, I'm going to think, it's, uh, I bet it is this way. And then the body say, no, it's over there. And I say, no, no, it's over here. And the body would, you know, would say, no, no, it's over there. So I have to argue with the body and say, then prove it to me. And during that process, I learned a lot. I learned where I'm wrong. Uh, yes, of course, according to our expertise, and a lot of time I'm right, but there are times I am I'm also wrong, and the time that I'm wrong, I've learned a lot, and that's allowed me to solve a lot of difficult cases and challenging health cases, because I sit and comb through the evidence, and through that, I've learned so much, and this is basically my medical school. That's how I train myself. So, um, it is a yes-no system. How does it work? So basically, you uh, measure the, um, the point conductivity, and what do we measure? We measure the... Um, how, because we are all energy and electricity, so you can tap in and you will get a meter that rise, right? So when you insert a substance into circuit with the body, your body, if there is a resonance, your body will then shift 
you can measure that at, at the cellular level and it reflects the, the um, electrical conductivity. You can actually sense it and it's shift. And that's, when there's a shift, when there's a resonance, I record the data. So what is resonance? A resonance occurs when two or more substances have similar of the same frequency. In other words, um, if I put in a liver substance and if the body recognize it, it that would, then it would go into resonance. Yeah, so when two waves have similar, when two substances have similar frequencies, it would go into resonance. For example, if I talk about biorelatory medicine, you are interested. But if I talk about maybe playing basketball and you have nothing to do with basketball and you get bored, there's no resonance there. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for resonance and that could be measured and that could be sensed sense through the shift of the current. So I use the current to give me another feedback so, so I know it's just not in my head. It is another actual current that you can sense and you can feel there's a shift and that allow me to um, to know, yes, there is a evidence, there's a shift there as I record the data, and the data in, um, the data in, uh, organized in patterns allow me to solve, uh, to speak to the body. And the intelligence of the body comes back and it talks to you. And when it talks to you, we become more effective in solving the problem. So, so here, uh, a razor pass can sit and make this measurement. You can see the device is um, there and here. We put substances in, we measure. In this case, you can measure either fingers or the toes. And then you can see if this substance re um, resonate with the body and then the meter would um, swing certain ways. So how do I solve the case? Um, first, there are different questions that we have to ask. Where is it? What's going on? What kind of toxin? How bad is the situation? What are the biological indices? How is the matrix? And what are the key remedies? So when we ask these basic questions, basically, uh, by the time we get an answer, we'll be able to solve almost everything, unless the case is so far advanced that the person is so far gone that we're not able to uh, do much about it. So to do a workup, I measure biological index. I want to know where does it come from, what organs, what kind of intoxication using nozote, what kind of deficiency, how the metabolism is more acid, alkali, uh, uh, what are the emotions, if there are any that affecting the person, how is the state of the immune system, the allergy, what are you allergic to, what organ the allergy is located in, what kind of food the person is allergic to, and also, uh, do you have any degenerative process toward pre-malignant and so on? Here, to help people navigate through what something would be best to use, um, I, used, I, um, I, used the, um, uh, uh, I used this method to understand and help people navigate through which one will work the best and which one will uh, not work the best for the person. So, um, thanks to the work of Dr. Helmut Schimmel, the biological matrix can be scientifically measured to determine how toxic is the, um, is the, the, the connective tissue of a living organism. And um, this would be my contribution uh, to, to the field is that the Resopathy Institute, we will continue Dr. Schimmel research in all the case studies. And so I have uh, many, many case studies that I'm going to present. Uh, for you in the next, um, in the next um, lecture. I will go through all the cases to show how I solve these cases. And again, it will be a lot of data. It's going to be quite a little bit boring. But again, that's what I do uh, to really understand how the body works. And you can use that knowledge to apply in with what you do. But I want to prove that I want to move the, the field of bioenergetic medicine forward. And the way to do it is to prove it scientifically. Because often energy medicine is being seen as a little bit, you know, California woo-woo, and I come from California, and waving hands, and I, uh, I spend enough time in Germany with physicists, and I know that um, it, it, the field is so far advanced, and we just now begin to catch up with it, only because we now have technology 
to understand the feel what it is. Because why? Because now we have um, uh, technology to know that we can sit at the computer and transfer information. We don't have to get on the horsey to go and deliver a message. So that allows us to understand that information can be transferred and the field is based on uh, the science of information and energy. And everything in the universe is energy. We are one billion times more energy than material. And um, so I want to prove to myself that the method works. So I spent the last 27 years just sitting there doing this to prove to myself. And then the fire forced me to step out and say, it's time, there's enough data. You need to get out and begin to share the knowledge. So the next one, I will go into case studies and share that with you. Any questions? Yes. Um, that was taught to me um, from Shimo. He found that in, um, in measuring uh, many people and to this Mason kind ampule, always at the foundation, two numbers always comes up. So I begin to apply it and I found the same thing. So that through um, pure um, empirical evidence, that we found that uh, came up that way. So 7, 9, 8, 10, 9, 11, 10, 12, those are very, um, th those are very basic what I see all the time. And then any additional numbers show additional issues. So always look to see what is at the foundation. So the person come in, for example, they, they say, oh, you know, this is, uh, I, I don't feel right, but, um, um, you know, I'm looking to see what can you do to help me with my autoimmune. For example, if you find something at uh, uh, 14, so it's not too bad. Functionally, it's not too bad. But if the baseline is 9-11 and you know they're not able to resolve it. But if they come in, you see something at 15, 16, but your baseline is 8, 10, it's still easy because they're able to regulate. That's the key. The, the two numbers just show your ability to regulate, and that's what we have found. Um, all these years. I mean, it should, yes? Uh, yeah, it's different. Um, Dr. Fo measured the scale from zero to 100, and he, um, what he does is he uh, just measure acupuncture point to see how much energy um, how conductive is the person, and he put a scale from one to 100, and he started to say, well, let's say 50 is the middle, so if 50, that means the point is balanced. If, if you have too much, over 50, too much energy he considered, and uh, an inflammation on an itis, or if it's too little or less, is a degeneration process and an osis. So he determined to the scale from one to 100. So he measure each point and measure, for example, if the point on the bladder meridian is low, then he could say there is an issue with the, uh, with the bladder not having enough energy. So if the point measure high, he then can see what organ is related to, it could be an inflammation. So that's how it is done. The biological index is different. The biological index measure the matrix, measure, assess the conditions of the matrix. Of all kind of substances, it could be um, it could be herbal tincture, it could be homeopathic um, uh, remedies. Oh uh, yes, those are mason kind, okay. mason kind, which is the uh, the connective tissue ampule in different potencies. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so 
First, we always go in and measure, assess the matrix right away. How bad is the situation? That's the first thing I always do. So when uh, some of you come and have me test, that's the first thing I do. How bad is the situation? Uh, and then once we see how bad, we want to know where is it located. So when with him, uh, we measure how bad is the situation and where is it located. And of course, there are many things, but you have to prioritize. So that 21 equal heart is very rare. I mean, the heart, the heart should be 7, 9. The heart, if the heart even at 14, 15, I'm already concerned, right? That's something the heart should be good. So the heart at 21 is just not right. And so right away, like, uh, he looks strong, he looks healthy, he's like, he's buff, like amazing. And we just say, and he said, when you go out for a race, I say, don't, don't go for a race. You know, don't go it. Don't, don't do it. And he still do it anyway. So the 21 tell us, like, this is not good, like, like maximum scale. So the matrix allow me to know right away, doesn't matter what you do. Um, uh, whatever therapy you use, whether it's natural or not natural medicine, if the matrix start to go higher, the therapy is not right. So this is another thing that I learned very interesting. I, um, I don't prescribe chemo, I'm not a medical doctor, but I have um, oncologists and doctor begin to send me um, uh, chemos so I can test for their patients. So these are doctors that are um, exploring to see to look for because they do uh, chemo sensitivity testing, but sometimes the person still reacts, so they start to send me all these chemos. So I start to learn a lot about all these chemos. And um, my head, I think all chemos are bad. That's, you know, I'm into natural medicine, so I always think chemos are really, it's not good. So I start to record each, um, each of them, and I, to my surprise, some chemo actually moved the matrix to become better. And some chemo improved the immune system. I'm just like, whoa. Um, so, um, so I start to talk to the doctor, and I say, if you combine this and this, the, per you, the person uh, will be able to get better. And he did that, and the person get better. But it's not designed to be for long term. You just move the matrix, and then you get out, and then you support the body. Some chemo completely bring the person to 21 right away. So they come in at 8, 17, 18, I put in the chemo, boom, 21. Crash the immune system, I say, don't do this one. So you can use this as a way to assess, and this is where I learn a lot, because like I say, a lot of time, I think I know something based on my expertise, but then there are times I'm wrong. And so through that process, I learn a lot. Absolutely amazing, and especially uh, learning about drugs too. And again, I don't prescribe drugs or anything, but I learned so much, and especially when it comes to chemo. That's when I really learned how the chemo works. And there are some. That's why some people respond to it, and some people don't. You just have to know how toxic, the, where the person is at. Can the person handle that? Even I prep a lot of people for sur surgeries before they go into surgeries. If I, did, uh, I work with a lot of dentists, so they look into the mouth and they say, hmm, I don't know if the person can handle the surgery. And they would send to me and I would assess the biological index and I say, don't do the surgery yet. Let get them to feel better, move the lymph. Um, do whatever we need to, and then you go in. And often when we do that, and you bring down the, the biological index, the person responds to the surgery beautifully and heal very fast. Yes. The two numbers, those are the foundation. It just, think of it this way. Um, it's just describe the current situation. So seven nine. So think the matrix. Your biological matrix is like um, is like the traffic flow. Okay. So we are the cells. So we you get out to the you get out there, and if the road is jammed with traffic, you cannot get out to buy food, and garbage man cannot come to pick up the garbage. It's not efficient in the, as an economy. So if you get out and the traffic is flowing, seven nine. You can get out and go grab some food and come right home in 15 minutes. If you get out you at 810, the foundation, there's traffic, but you still can get out and do things and come back. If you get out to, and the matrix is at 911, you're hitting rush hour traffic. You know, say, oh my God, you know, like here's the traffic again. It takes you longer to go get something and return. And when you get out 1012, you 
there's an accident on the road. Traffic is not moving. You're just crawling. It's not efficient. It's not efficient in order to do operate anything. You cannot repair your house. You cannot go get stuff. So as a result, the cells suffer. It just gives you an indication how bad is the situation, right? So if the matrix is jammed, the cells are stuck together, right? Your pH shifts so much. Now cells are morphing, right, into different forms. So they become parasitic to the body. They have their own toxin, and they generate these uh, toxin. So you in the condition where everything is gel up. So you, you're not efficient. The, nut the cell cannot get nutrients, right? And you cannot detox. So uh, your, like, let's say your house is falling apart, you cannot get out, you can get, not get a plumber to come in, you cannot get an electrician to come in, you cannot get out to buy food. It's not, it's not good. Say that again? What would be my cutoff? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, if I see 10, 12 as a baseline, or even 9, 11, they're not efficient in terms of detox. You're going to load them more with stuff. Because when you surgery, they're going to pump you with stuff, and you're more exposed to infection. So you have to be ready. You have to be make sure your immune system is up. So if your matrix is blocked, your, the surgery will not be as effective. Uh, it would, it would you open up even more problems? The person just will feel really bad. Or if the matrix is, is, so, uh, is so blocked, you're going to have a lot of Herzheimer reaction. Right? So if you go in and you see the matrix is flowing, you can load them with vitamins. You can load them with stuff. In the case of when they are 10, 12, baseline, it's like what I've learned is I thought, Again, I thought that the sicker the person, the more stuff they're going to need. But what I learned is the reverse. The sicker the person, the less stuff they're going to need. So maybe we're loading them with too much. They're not able to handle that, and they have a reaction. So sometimes stepping away from it, because the matrix is already so blocked. I mean, the traffic is already blocked. You don't want to add more cars into it. You have to remove the cars, right? So how we function. In society, it's just like how the cells function, exactly the same. All right, thank you.